Good morning, everyone. Um, normally, I come on live on Facebook at around um, 9 a.m. Uh, Central Time, but due to a technical difficulty today, I was unable to to come on live at that time, um, but I'm live now. Um, I've already recorded the full Sunday school lesson on um, my conference call. So if you want a full lesson, uh, you can go to the conference call and um, look, listen to it on the conference call. I'll have that recording out there later. But right now, right now, I want to talk about the Sunday school lesson. And I'm just going to do about a 10 or 15 minute briefing of the Sunday school lesson. The Sunday school lesson today comes from Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Psalms 91 is a uh, rendition of Second, you know, First Chronicles chapter 16 verses 20 through through 24. 1 Chronicles chapter 16 verses 23 through 24. So I'm going to read that scripture first before I read uh, Psalms 96. So turn with me, if you will, to uh, First, uh, First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 23 uh, to 24. Okay? Um, chapter 16, verses 23 to 24. Um, uh, and it reads as follows. It says, Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all people. Now that's how um, it reads in Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 23 to 24. Well, um, David uh, in that particular passage of scripture um, was singing and dancing in front of the Lord. You've heard the song that says that dance like David danced, let us sing like David sung, let us praise God like David praised God. And David was praising God because at that point in time, he had just became king of, of, of all of Israel and he was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back uh, unto uh, uh, the mountain. And, and he had uh, been through an experience when they first tried to move the Ark. Um, one of the, uh, the men named uh, Yus Yusa uh, touched it and he died. Then they had to get the Levitical priest to pick up the, the, the Ark and, uh, with, with poles as the scripture had prescribed for them to do. And they picked up the ark with the thing and they brought it on up to the mountain where they could all praise and, and worship God in the beauty of his holiness. And so David, after he did that song and praise God, he did what I call a remix, uh, um, uh, a remix. And he did this remix in Psalms 91. Now, so if you want to tag this text in Psalms 91, uh, I, I want to tag this text as, that's my jam. That's my jam. Yeah, I, I know some of you going, wait a minute, Pat, what are you talking about, Pastor Mark? Uh, and, and I didn't say this, I am Pastor Mark of New Harvest Seed Church in Harvest, Alabama. And, 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 and check this out, check this out. If, 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 if you play Frankie Beverly and Mays, Joy and Pain, you're going to see my hands go up. Cause I'm gonna, that's that's my jam. Joy and pain is like sunshine and rain. I, that's my jam. That's my jam. And then if you play Earth, Wind, and Fire, that's the way of the world. Or be ever wonderful. Or reason. I, I love Earth, Wind, and Fire. That that's my jam. That's my jam. I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna sing it. I'm gonna dance. I'm gonna do something. Because that is my jam. You might have songs that are your jam. I love Reasons by Earth, Wind, and Fire. I have other songs. Uh, 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 Luther Vandross, A House Is Not a Home. Oh, you're you going to get me singing. That's, that's, that's my 
jam. And David, and David, he loved the Lord so much that after he had praised like he had praised on that day, he came back and written this song, this song, because that was his jam. But now, this jam, this, this song, this song that he sung, he did it as a remix. Listen to verses 1 through 3 in, in Psalms 96 now. He says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all the people. He, he did what we call a remix. He sampled, if you will. He sampled 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 23 through 24, and then he added in a remix. You know, that's what the kids do today. That's what the rappers do today. They'll take an old song and they'll add something to it and they'll make it a remix, if you will. And, and we need to understand that, that, that we have to sing a new song and sometimes our new song is like a remix. Oh, let, let, me, let, let, me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Y'all know Biz Marquis. Biz Marquis wrote this song about, about friends and he had a portion in that song where he said, uh, 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 in the song, he says, oh, baby, you, you got what I need. You say you're just a friend. You say you just a friend. Oh, baby, you, you got what I need. And so I've taken that song uh, 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 and remixed it. I made it a Jesus song. I said, oh, Jesus, you, you got what I need. You're more than just a friend. You're more than just a friend. Oh, Jesus, you, you got what I need. You're more than just a friend. You're more than just a friend. That's my remix of that. I sampled Biz Marquis' song, and then I made it into a gospel song because that's who Jesus is to me. And that's when, so when this psalmist says, when David says, sing to the Lord a new song, you, you, you have to have a new song in your heart, a new way of worshiping God in your heart. Praise ought to be coming out of your lips. The psalmist says, let everything that have breath Praise the Lord. You ought to have praise on your lips. And in this Sunday school lesson, in this text, he wants us to sing to God. Sing of the news that, that the news is good. Because he got us when you think of the Lord, you should think of the Lord and know that he is good. Matter of fact, I heard sorry, heard another song that says that that uh, um it, it, I could say. This song says, I could say God is good, but I know better. It's all God. He, he In that song, he talks about the fact that, that God has blessed him with a home, and God has blessed him with a car, and God has blessed him with a job, and God has blessed him with good health, and God has blessed him with family and friends. He says, it, 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 if I, it, I could say it, it's all good, but I know better. It's all God. We, we ought to have a new song on our lips, no matter what we're going through. I don't care what crisis that you're going through. I don't care what situation or circumstances that you're dealing with. You should still have a praise on your lips and a glory hallelujah on your, on your, on your mind and on your heart. As I heard someone say this morning, you got to say hallelujah anyhow. No matter what's going on in your life, you got to say hallelujah anyhow because it's God. It's God that's in control. It's God that you worship. And he promised us that all things, the scripture says, we know. Those of us who know, we know all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So that means that uh, my good is working for my good. That means that my bad is working for my good. That means even my ugly can work for my good. Yes. Yes. 
You got to have a new song on your lips and a new song in your heart. I have a song now that I'm so excited about. It's called He Still Loves Me by this, this uh, uh, pastor, and, and Antonio uh, uh, Hutchison, featuring the Christian United Choir. And listen to this song. I can't sing it. I'm just going to talk about it. He says in that song, through all of my tears, through all of my tests, when I only passed the few, and failed all the rest. When I gave up on me. And failure was all that I could see. The only reason I'm still here. Is he still loves me. In spite of my pain. And my disappointments. I've suffered some shame. I thought I wasn't anointed. When people gave up on me. And I have to stop that because when he said this part, he, he ad lived and he says, when people gave up on me, when my family gave up on me, when my friends gave up on me, when I even gave up on myself. And I could not even see my way, my way I could not even see. The only reason I survived is he still loved me. Yeah, he loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Thank you for loving me, Jesus. Thank you for loving me, Jesus. I know that you love me. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, when you realize and recognize that God loves you. It doesn't matter about your tears. It doesn't matter about the test that you have failed. It does not matter. Because you're still here. And then, if you're old school, you can holler, this is my jam. And you could sing like the Williams Brothers song. I am a living testimony. I should have been, I could have been dead and gone. But Lord, you let me live on. I am a living testimony. And I thank you, Lord, for keeping me alive. I've seen miracles after miracles performed in my life. You keep having mercy on me. I didn't even deserve to be alive. When I faced dangers that I couldn't see, you kept your angels uh, encamped all around me. And I wanted to take the time out and say, I thank you, Lord. I'm still here. Oh, hallelujah. If you don't have that hallelujah anyhow on your heart and on your lips, this message is to encourage you to give God some praise, to find your jam and worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. In Psalm 91, Psalm 96, excuse me, he says in verse nine, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns, the world also is firmly established and it shall not be moved. You ought to have a worship on your lips, a praise in your mouth. And you got to say hallelujah anyhow. It doesn't matter if the refrigerator empty, hallelujah anyhow. It does not matter if the cupboard is bare, hallelujah anyhow. It doesn't matter if the bank account is empty. You ought to have a hallelujah anyhow. It does not matter if the car is even broke down. You got to have a hallelujah anyhow. It doesn't matter if somebody treating you bad or mistreating you. You ought to have a hallelujah anyhow because there's a but God in every situation. But the Lord, but the Lord, because he's working on your behalf and behind the scenes doing things that you don't even see or understand because that's how the Lord is. Oh, hallelujah. And finally, 
after you learn to sing a new song, after you learn to praise God, after you've learned to worship God, then you ought to rejoice. Why should you rejoice? You should rejoice because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he's coming back one day. And he promised us when he comes back that, that, that he's going to come in a cloud in the sky. And he's going to raise those that have died before. He's going to raise them up first and they're going to meet him in the sky. And those of us who are still here, who are still physically alive, he says he's going to call us up there to be with him also. And he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And we're going to reign with him in this new millennium where there'd be no more sadness, no more dying, no more crying, and no more tears. See, when you got saved, just like when I got saved, when we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we believe in his death, his burial, and his resurrection, when we confess that with our mouths and believe it in our heart. We became saved. What do you mean we became saved? He saved us from the penalty of sin. What is the penalty of sin? The penalty of sin. It, it says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He saved us from death. He saved us from hell. We have been saved and set free. But not only does he save us from the penalty of sin, but he also saves us from the power of sin. That's why he tells us and commands us to confess our sins. And when we confess our sins to him, uh, he is faithful and just uh, to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If you are a theologian, that's called the sanctification process. After the salvation process, there comes the sanctification process where you go throughout the rest of your life turning to God, confessing your sins. Because as, as Paul says, when I would do right, evil is always around me. That which I would do, I do not. That which I would not do, I do anyhow. Oh Lord, oh wretched man am I. Who can save me? Oh, thanks be to God our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he goes on to say this in that eighth chapter of Romans. Therefore, there is no condemnation. Therefore, there is no condemnation for them who walk in the spirit. Oh, you got to hear me. After you have been saved, you have received salvation. He saves us from the penalty of sin. Then he takes us through the sanctification process and saves us from the very power of sin. That's why we can say all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. And we can go on to say nothing can separate us from the love of God. No height, no depth, no things present, no things to come. We are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. That is a reason. Ah, oh, somebody ought to say hallelujah right now. Now, somebody should say thank you Lord right now because we are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus and when he comes back he's going to save us from the very presence of sin because he says in his new heaven and in his new earth it's going to be glory hallelujah each and every day and we can worship him and the beauty of his holiness. And we're going to sing praises unto him. And not only are we going to sing praises unto him. The whole earth. The new earth. And the new heaven. Is going to praise his name. We get a glimpse of that now. In this world. As the psalmist says. If you ever see the fields rejoice over the Lord. The birds sing unto the Lord. The, the, the ocean roars in its fullness because of the Lord. If you've ever been to the ocean and you see the waves coming in, the waves coming out, they're giving God praise uh, as they come in and they're giving God praise as the waves go out. If you ever listen to the birds in the morning, they get up singing glory, hallelujah. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet, tweet. They are giving God praise because they know that the God they serve is going to provide food for them. He knows that he's going to bless them just like he's going to bless us. 
Jesus told us on the Sermon on the Mount, Behold the birds and how I bless them. Look at the lilies of the fields and how I've arrayed them. If he does that for them, how much more will he do it for us who are his children? When he comes back, he's coming back as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we ought to rejoice because the Lord is the strength of our hope and the hope of our strength. That's what we're looking forward to, that glad morning when we're going to see him face to face and we're going to be known as we are known. Oh, glory, hallelujah. I just want to encourage you today. You ought to sing to the Lord a new song. You ought to praise him because God is great. You ought to worship him because the Lord is worthy of the worship. And you ought to rejoice because the King of kings and the Lord of lords has promised us that he's coming back one glad morning. That's the end of the message. I, I couldn't cover all the message in this short period of time in Psalm 91. Go read it for yourself. Let us have a word of prayer. I want to pray the prayer of salvation first before I close out this message. And for some reason, here we go. Here we go. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life. To rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. Find you a local body of believers who believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who studies his word, who prays and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. And if you're going through a crisis right now, I want you to think about what Isaiah said in the sixth chapter. The, script, the scripture says, in the year that King Isaiah died, it says that Isaiah went to church and he entered the temple and he saw the, the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. It says that the sound of his voice, it just shook the whole place. And then all of a sudden the sheriffs came and they started singing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That's worshiping the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. The thought I want you to remember. Praise and worship God in the beauty of his holiness. That's the end of this message. It's going to be live. I'm going to close it out and the recording will be on Facebook. Please share this recording with your friends. Let them know that we ought to praise and worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. And we ought to have our song that we can say, that's my jam. Every time I hear that song, I can say, that's my jam. And you do your rhythmics. If it's a secular song, make it a God song. Because that's what I do. And I'm going to end with that song. Oh, Jesus, you, you got what I need. You are more than just a friend. You're more than just a friend. Oh, Jesus, you, you got what I need. Thank you, Lord. We worship you and we praise you. Amen.